though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. And charity is part of a Christian's life. It is very important to bear the fruits of charity. Without love, we cannot have true biblical charity. The world today has a wrong understanding of what charity actually is. They even claim they have done many wonderful works for others and boast of it, but yet harbor evil towards others, which proves Christ is not abiding and his law of love does not exist in the heart of that professor. We can have an outward showing of works of charity and doing well unto others, but we deceive ourselves and others around us who we profess to be in Christ when we have not biblical charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. We are to be perfect in all things that are good. Once we establish all things that are good for us and have the image of Christ stamped on our lives, when we have perfected all good things, then we shall have charity. Charity is establishing perfect love in all things just as Christ is and we should be. Love is of God, and if we love not and perfect not all things, then we know not God as we should. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And so, seeing that God is love, and we want to abide in His love, and we want to always continue in His love, what must we do as professed Christians who love God supremely? As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. If we keep his commandments and continue in them, then we shall develop perfect love in all good things for God, which is charity. Charity is establishing the Ten Commandments, which is the expression of God's holy character. Establishing the law of God is establishing love for Him supremely and each other. Perfecting the law is charity, the bond of perfection. When we come to the perfection of obedience to God, we can endure all things. We will have kindness at all times. We will not easily be provoked by the world to anger. We will think not evil of others. We will not be puffed up and highly esteeming ourselves, nor rejoicing in iniquity, but rather rejoicing in truth. We will be able to bear all things that come our way, hope in all things, and overcome evil through good. We will never fail 
when we have charity. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, and so, what will perfect love or charity also do for us? And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. It means that we will not sin any more or desire to please the flesh, because we have decided to allow Christ to work his works of love in our life, which in the end we will have developed perfect charity. And what else will charity or perfecting love do for us? There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And just as love will cast out all fears, love will also go further than what is written. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. And as we learn to go the extra mile in love, which will develop charity, what else can we learn in our service for the Master, and to be the sons and daughters of the Most High God? But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. There is not one soul among the professed Christian world who can truly confess Christ to a sin-stricken world and rebellious one, unless the mind and spirit of Christ is living within them. It is impossible to communicate to a sinful world that Christ is abiding in our life if we have not charity. A Christian's conversation and the deportment should be a real and visible expression of grace, and thus the truth that is within all biblical Christians will be revealed through our life sermon. If the heart is sanctified, through the truth, and if it is submissive to the truth and humbled by the truth, then the fruits will be seen outwardly and will be a most effectual confession of Christ. Words and profession are not enough for a Christian who claims to love God supremely and their fellow man. If we love Christ, if Christ is to us as we are to him, then the love of Christ will be seen through our works of charity. So let our lives shine forth in charity, which is developing perfect love in all obedience to God through the keeping of all his laws, which defines perfect love for him supremely and love for each other. Let us render our lives unto God and we will have charity. So, let all your things be done with charity.